The colonization of space by humanity has long been a fantasy of people throughout the ages and has become the cliched staple of sci-fi over the years. However, given a long enough time span, it is assuredly the only salvation for our species and the other species that we share this planet with. The following details the serious approach to making permanent human habitats in space. The first step in our colonization of space has already been completed. The establishment of a semi-permanent habitat in low Earth orbit, the International Space Station. Secondly, the establishment of a semi-permanent base on the Moon could be implemented. These habitats would likely be dome-like structures built over craters with ultra-lightweight materials produced on Earth. Eventually, the moon could be excavated and mined, and the metals extracted would be processed and used for construction for future structures. Thirdly, a colony of pressurized capsules could be established on the surface of Mars initially. Later, Mars could be terraformed by igniting nuclear weapons above its icy poles to release CO2 and water into the atmosphere in order to induce a greenhouse effect to warm the planet. Photosynthetic microbes such as bloom-green algae could then be released on the planet to extract oxygen from the atmosphere and provide high-protein sustenance for its inhabitants. How many Saturn V class launches would it take to land 8 people on Mars with enough supplies to last them 30 years with a reasonable recycling strategy? Could these people in 30 years build a habitat big enough for them and their children using only indigenous materials? And in another 30 years, without further supplies from Earth, could these approximately 16 children enlarge the habitat to include 32 grandchildren and so on? The original mission could even include a large sample of frozen egg and sperm cells to supply additional genetic diversity. Once initial colonization of Mars has been completed, humanity will likely stretch out amongst the solar system, colonizing asteroids, moons of Jupiter like Europa and Ganymede, and perhaps establishing a floating city in Venus's atmosphere. A starship resembling a city in space would enable interstellar travel. Construction would use materials extracted from the moon and sent to space using a mass driver. A mass catcher at a Lagrangian point, points in space where objects can remain stationary relative to larger objects due to gravitational effects, would collect materials transporting them to another Lagrangian point between the sun and earth where they would be processed in an industrial facility to construct the ship. Interstellar ships would be powered by a hybrid of primarily solar power with nuclear power reserves. There would be different generations of ships, the first resembling a Stanford Taurus, two kilometers in diameter perhaps, and capable of housing 10,000 permanent residents. Secondly, Burnell Spheres, perhaps 16 kilometers in diameter, with a target population of 20 to 30,000. And then O'Neill Cylinders, 8 kilometers in diameter and 32 kilometers long, capable of housing tens of millions, accompanied with a giant light cell with a diameter perhaps the size of the state of Texas. If humanity does gain access to a large amount of energy, on the order of the mass energy of entire planets, it may eventually become feasible to construct Alcabar warp drives. These are one of the few methods of superluminal travel which may be possible under current physics. A galactic colony could then hypothetically be established by a sufficiently advanced civilization that enabled faster than light speed travel and had energy pumping stations littered along the line of the ecliptic of solar systems. Power plants would consist of Dyson spheres that capture most of the energy output of the star. People who realize that colonizing the galaxy would be very beneficial to our survival have generally regarded such as inevitable, but it is not. To realize this goal, we must constitute a multinational organization convened to reach these destinies. As is true of other frontier opening endeavors, the capital investment necessary for space colonization would probably come from the state. Later, private interests could supplement this endeavor. You might argue that there is no hurry to colonize space within the next century. Why not wait a few centuries until technology has become so advanced that colonizing becomes easy? But if we lose the capacity for spaceflight before we've colonized, by the collapse of civilization, loss of technology, or diminished economic ability, then we've missed our chance. It's good that we went to the moon in the 1960s. If we waited another 30 years hoping for an easier time of it, we might never have made it, as we now seem to have far less money for such ventures. We should act with educated urgency, aware of our own species' mortality. 
we have the responsibility to elevate humanity from its cradle and out to the cosmos.